Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Grimm. I'm Dean of the Chapel here at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's my pleasure to be with you this month. Over the past academic year, you've been hearing from our two cantors, Kevin Hildebrand and Matthew Mockhammer, regarding various ideas related to planning for worship. One of the early conversations you heard was regarding the singing of the Psalms. And I want to return to that topic today, this time in particular, talking about how one sings the Psalms. We know without a doubt that the Psalms have been sung throughout their history, all the way back to the days when King David was writing Psalms and, and others as well. Um, through the history of the church, from the earliest centuries down to the present, Psalms were sung. And in our current hymnals, we have versions or a way of singing the Psalms that facilitates that singing in a very simple fashion that allows congregations to participate. One of the things that happens, though, when a congregation joins in singing the Psalms is that they can slow down and become a bit lethargic. And so I want to talk today a little bit about how one might help to encourage a more natural singing of the Psalms so that they really resemble normal speech. Let's do that by taking a look at Psalm 100. What you will see as we start to consider this is that you want to aim for singing the psalm the same way you would speak it. Let's take a look at verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Now, that's a pretty natural way of reading the psalm. If you sing the psalm, very often what happens when you go to a congregation, you'll hear something like this. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. In other words, it just has a sense of kind of plodding along and not really having that sense of, of how one would speak. And so one of the tasks that I would suggest you might want to consider is as you're teaching a psalm to a choir, or you're teaching that psalm to even a soloist to help them to lead the congregation, that you encourage them to work on that natural rhythm of speech. And that needs to be considered in another way. Let's take a look for a second at one of the psalm tones, the one I just sang, in fact. What you see is that, and you're familiar with this, I'm pretty sure, you have what are called reciting tones in the two halves of the psalm tone. And those reciting tones are capable of bearing as many words as you have in that line save for the last two or three syllables, which are then sung to those final cadences in each half. Let's go back to Psalm 100 and take a look and see again how this works in, in a way that, that, again, is natural. What you don't want to have happen is to sing those words on the single tone too fast in an unnatural way and then too slow with the cadence. For example, Psalm 100 verse 3 sometimes gets sung this way. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Again, you notice how unnatural that is. We wouldn't speak it that way, so let's not sing it that way. Instead, it would go like this. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. And so what you want to aim for is that natural rhythm of speech. Um, in order that you're very carefully following along and that it comes out sounding the way one would speak it. Now, if you're leading the congregations singing the psalm, let's say by accompanying them on the organ, you're not going to be able to force them into a natural speech necessarily. If you're holding the reciting tone while they're singing all those syllables, you can't play each syllable by repeating the tone. You simply have to wait for them to get to the end of the phrase. But when they get to the end of the phrase, I would suggest that's the point where you want to just allow it to move along as best you can. And another suggestion would be don't hang on to the last note too long so that it, it kind of naturally lingers. By lifting right away, giving them a chance to breathe with it and moving into the next phrase or the next verse, that will also kind of just gently help them to keep that psalm moving. And if they hear a choir or a solo singing alternating verses in that natural rhythm, over time they're going to pick up a little bit on that, one hopes, and so that that psalm can just move more gently and more naturally. As in one more example, let's take a look at Psalm 23. What you see here again, of course, a very familiar psalm, but something that's a little different in this particular case are the, is that first verse and how short it is. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
You want it to be in the rhythm of speech, and so it should come off something like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You don't want to hold that first word, I, too long. If you go, I shall not want, it simply doesn't sound the way we'd speak it. So watch again for keeping it very simple and, and moving things along. In verse 4, here we have quite the opposite. You have a lot of words in the first half of the verse. And in fact, you see there are several commas. And the point I'm going to make here is not all commas are equal. And when you're singing them, you need to be aware of that. Now, if the congregation were singing these verses again, you can't control it if they, if they happen to be singing verse 4. But if a soloist were singing verse 4, you might want to talk with them about whether they give both commas equal weight or whether they make one comma shorter than the other in terms of the space you allow. It seems to me that you probably would read the psalm this way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That last phrase seems to set off a little bit more from the previous two, so probably even singing it then. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Excuse me, I just made a mistake, as often happens when we practice these things. I have to keep going. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So you notice there, taking a little longer break after that second comma just more naturally follows uh, the way one would sing that psalm. So there are just a few thoughts and ideas that you might want to consider as you're leading the congregation in singing psalms, or if the choir is singing the psalms all by themselves, to aim for that natural rhythm of speech that just most naturally reflects how we would pray the psalms. Thanks very much. I hope this has been helpful for you.